forget that politics in New Zealand was once very much a boys club. Imagine then being a young gay feminist MP in the Muldoon government of the late 70s and early 80s. That MP was Marilyn Waring and, as she reveals in a new book about her nine years in that infamous regime, it was no picnic. Smiles and hugs at a party held to farewell her from Parliament. But there was another emotion on display that day in what remains one of the most iconic speeches of our political history. Perhaps it's not till you leave this place that you actually confront the private hell that it is for a woman to be here. It all began with such hope when Marilyn became an MP in 1975. First came the mansplaining, delivered here by Keith Holyoke. Now, I'm sorry, when you came in the door, of course, you should always bow to the speaker. Mm. And then, going to your seat here, whenever you cross the room, you bow again. Mm. And then, before long, the reality of being a woman in the sausage sizzle of politics began to take its toll. But then a karmic twist in 1984, when her threat to cross the floor took down the biggest bully of them all, Robert Muldoon. That doesn't give me much time to run up to an election, Prime Minister. Doesn't give my opponents much time to run up to an election, does it? <laughs> Marilyn Waring entered Parliament as the MP for Raglan in 1975 when she was just 23. She was only the sixth ever female MP in the National Party. In 1984, her stand on the nuclear issue sparked the infamous snap election announced by a slurring Muldoon in the halls of the Beehive. It's a remarkable story and Marilyn tells it all in her new book, The Political Years, Marilyn Waring, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jeremy. Firstly, the cover of the book, a picture paints a thousand words, doesn't it? I because think so, yes. You are the only woman in this photo. 23 when you entered Parliament. Yeah, it's a bit precocious, isn't it? You're a, you're a spring chicken. I was. Tell me about Parliament in 1975. Boys' own annual, really. Uh, I think about 40% of the Cabinet um, had served in the Second World War. There were four women, just two women, in the National Caucus. I was the only woman in the North Island. So it was a very different period. Did you feel differently when you entered Parliament to when you left Parliament? Oh, certainly. And was it largely at the hands of, of one person or a number of people? Um, the system operates to completely support... Well, the, the bullying, the patriarchy, the everything. There was nothing in the system um, that stopped the relentlessness of those dynamics. So let's do a really simplistic view of history here. You cross the floor, vote against the National Party. Yeah. Muldoon announces a snap election. He loses to the Labour Party. David Longy turns up. Roger Douglas is his Minister of Finance. Roger Nomics comes along. Everything changes in New Zealand. You're responsible for that. No, I assisted the election um, decision, the decision to call an election. Uh, beyond that, you know, I can't do anything. But I must say that for many years in that National Caucus, there had been a group of colleagues who were pushing very hard for some of the things Douglas then had to do. You know, the, I think agriculture had $800 million in subsidies. We spent more on social welfare for sheep than we did for children. Um, it was intolerable, protected industries all over the place, things that hadn't changed since 1945. But still, you played quite a large hand in that. You rolled the dice at that point, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm quite pleased about that, actually. Marilyn, thanks so much for joining us. You have an amazing part in New Zealand history, and it's lovely to meet you. Thank you very much.